Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. I'm Cass, this is Jasper, and today I'm going to show you how the Forerunner does towing the base camp over Teton Pass. quite often how the Forerunner does towing the base camp. So we're gonna go through that a little bit today and I'm gonna take you with us as we drive over Teton Pass. Teton Pass is the steepest pass that I have driven over so far. It has 10% grades on both sides. So we're gonna have to crawl up a 10% grade and then come back down the backside in a 10% grade as well. So come along and I'll show you how the Forerunner does. Now we're sitting here waiting for all the cars to pass because the one thing is we will be going slow up this mountain and I try to have as few people behind me as possible that way they're not trying to pass in dangerous spots and I don't have to worry about anybody tailing behind me as I'm going up a hill I will not pull over to let people by because I need the momentum to keep myself going up the mountain but right at the top I usually pull over let the whole line of cars pass and then as I'm coming back down if there's a good spot to pull over and I have a big line of cars behind me I'll pull over as well and let people go by. Now my windshield is really dirty, so hopefully the camera is not focusing on the bugs on the windshield, and hopefully you can see the views as we come through the pass. All right, we are slowly starting the climb up here. So these are 50 mile an hour turns currently, but we're gonna get into some hairpin turns up here, and those are between 15 and 25 mile an hour turns. At this point, we are cruising at about 50 miles an hour. I'm at 3,000 RPMs. The truck really hasn't started to notice the hill yet, but there you go. If you heard the engine just kick in, we're starting to climb and we're up to the 4,000 RPM point at this point. Whee! We're doing 40 miles an hour, 3,000 RPMs. We are not yet at the 10% grade, so I don't know what grade you would call this. I'd say this is like a normal mountain pass at this point. Now when I tow up these mountain passes, I really don't like to run up the mountain pass at 4,000 RPMs. I usually say around 3,000. So we are doing this climb in whatever gear we are in at 3,000 RPMs. So we were doing about 40. We're down to about 34 at this point as we come around these turns. All right, we're at the top of the pass. So going from Victor, Idaho into Jackson, Wyoming is not as bad towing uphill as going from Jackson into Victor. So when I was doing the Jackson to Victor route about a week ago, we were doing a good solid 25 and I felt like the Forerunner was definitely struggling dragging the base camp up the hill. Going this way, I actually really didn't feel like it was struggling that much. So if you're wondering what kind of rigs can make it over Teton Pass, do you see the massive Class A behind me? Some brave souls do take their bigger RVs over this as well. I often get asked how the Forerunner does towing the base camp. It is an SUV towing a trailer versus a truck towing a trailer. There really is a big difference between the two. But overall for an SUV, it does a really good job at towing the base camp. It does still feel a little underpowered at times. I don't like to push it past the 3000 RPMs, mostly because it's really loud. So I tend to cruise up these mountain passes, usually with the tractor trailers doing somewhere between 20 and 40 going up a pass. The mountain passes are definitely where the Forerunner struggles with the trailer. With that said, I've never had the Forerunner overheat. It has done a really good job using the engine brake and overall I feel comfortable going over these big mountain passes without a worry. However, with that said, if I had a truck, it still would tow a whole lot better than the Forerunner. So it kind of comes down to what do you want your vehicle for versus how do you want your towing experience. For me, having the Forerunner was important because I really wanted something that was really off-road capable so that Jasper and I could go off, find those trailheads that are way back, and really go explore the mountain roads and do some off-roading. A big pickup truck is not very good at doing that but it does a lot better at towing. So it comes down to what you want in terms of a vehicle. Overall, I'm very happy with the Forerunner. Also, to give you an idea, the base camp is 3,500 gross vehicle weight. 
the Forerunner has a max towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. So the base camp is well within the towing capacity of the Forerunner, but I honestly wouldn't tow anything bigger than the base camp with the Forerunner, just knowing how it tows overall. So with that said, let's head on back down the backside of the pass. This is where I downshift. So I use the engine to brake the base camp and the Forerunner. It helps so that you don't burn up your brakes. I usually do this in second gear on something that's steep, I will still have to use my brakes in order to make those 15 mile an hour hairpin turns, but it's a lot less stress on the brakes and there's a lot less risk of me burning them out. All right, you ready guys? While I'm towing down the mountain, I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions about the Forerunner. First, the gas mileage is terrible. I get between nine and 12 miles per gallon while I'm towing. I do have a three inch lift as well as the Gobi rack and Thule cargo carrier on top. So that definitely doesn't help. When I'm not towing, I do get about 14 miles to the gallon. In order to give the Forerunner a better setup for towing, I have installed airbags on the rear suspension. It helps with the sag, but it does not help with the weight distribution. From my research, the hitch on the Forerunner is not compatible with a weight distribution hitch. So if I was going to switch to a weight distribution hitch, which would be more effective, I would actually have to completely replace the hitch on the Forerunner. I just haven't done that yet, so the airbag do a really good job at preventing sag in the rear suspension. For the brakes, you do need to install a brake controller into the Forerunner. I have a Takancha P3 brake controller. I am on my second one, as my first one did have one of the buttons jam, and then it kept reducing the strength of the brakes and I just couldn't get it to work. The tires are not stock tires. I have upgraded to larger tires since I did a three inch lift and it gives you a little more room. They're the Falcon Wild Peak AT3W tires. I mostly purchase those tires for doing off-roading. They are nice and quiet on the highway, however, so I do recommend them as an all-around tire as well. All right, we're sitting here letting people pass, which is a little hard sometimes on these curves because you can't actually always see when people are coming. Napoleon is hanging on to the door. All right, now these are the 10% grades. So I am in second gear using my engine brake and then I do supplement it with using my actual brakes as well to make sure that I stay within a controlled speed. And finally for the question I get the most often, would I buy the 4Runner again? If I was in the situation where I was looking for a vehicle that could tow a small trailer and also was extremely capable off-road, I would absolutely buy the 4Runner again. I've driven it almost 100,000 miles and other than regular scheduled maintenance, I've never had to do anything to it. It is extremely reliable and it is fun to drive. However, I have started looking at Toyota Tundras and I am potentially going to be trading in the 4Runner for a Tundra. The reason is I do want to do some trips up to Alaska. So I'm actually looking to see if I can get a small truck camper that I can put on the back of the Tundra. So I have a small and very agile setup for if I'm doing those longer trips. So until I find a truck camper that I like and is light enough to be on a Toyota Tundra, I will be sticking with the 4Runner for the foreseeable future. All right, we have made it to Wilson, Wyoming, which is the bottom side of the pass, and we are back down on the valley floor. So we made it over the pass, no problem at all. It actually is much easier to do the Victor to Jackson route. So if you're ever traveling this way, just a heads up, driving up the Jackson to Victor side is definitely a bit more of a struggle. So if you have any questions about how the Forerunner does or anything about towing the base camp, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, thanks for joining us on this mountain pass and we'll see you next time, everybody.